Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I've got a new project here. I've got an easy go golf cart. I recently bought this to chauffeur my kids to school every morning so I don't have to sit in traffic through the drop off line. So on today's video, we're gonna be installing a rear seat for this thing so we can transport at least four or five people on this thing. So stay tuned. So what I got here, I've got this rear seat conversion kit from Steel Ing. This company is out of South Carolina and they actually make a lot of the kits and a lot of the rear seats that you actually see online. I ordered it from one of their dealers and it just dropped shipped from South Carolina. According to their site, it's supposed to be made in the USA, but it looks like the cushions are actually made in China and the rear grab bar over there is made in China. Maybe the main unit, the main structure of this is made in the USA because this box doesn't say anywhere made in China on it that I can see on the outside. So we'll go ahead and unbox everything and we'll see what's inside. So this thing came shipped in three different boxes as you saw earlier. That one box right here is the cushions, the bottom and the back cushion. I ended up ordering black even though my car has the ivory or the white. I wanted the black just because I thought it looked better. The rear grab bar came in its own box because that's an optional add-on item. And then the main piece right here, I got this from Steel It because theirs actually comes with a silver chrome diamond plate. So I really like that. As far as everything else goes, that's the bottom pan right there. That's the sidebars. The extra box right there is all the hardware bolts and then other miscellaneous bars that we have to put together once we get it onto the car. So as far as the cart that I have here, it's actually a 1994 EasyGo Metalist, which is the same thing as a TXT, if you didn't know. The only difference is the Metalist, it's all metal body. They got this plastic bumpers on the rear and the front here, that's how you can tell. This is an old fleet vehicle, it's really well maintained for a 1994. Uh, I inspected it, it looked pretty good on the underside, just your normal surface rust from being 30 years old in Florida, but overall the rest of it was nice. The main reason why I got it was it had newer Trojan batteries. I think these are from 2020, which they're about three and a half years old right now, which is about half their life. So that's pretty good for what they are. So I ended up getting this because I planned on fixing it up anyways. That's why I got a golf cart so old. Basically anything in really good condition always holds its value on these golf carts. So the EasyGo TXTs from 96 to 2013, which is what this kit is for, it's all the same mounts. So this is a Metalist from 94. It's also the same mounts. So we're gonna go ahead and just unbolt all this stuff back here. We reuse these bars for this particular seat kit. But other than that, everything else needs to go off. We're gonna end up relocating this onto the new bars. So we flipped through the instructions. That's exactly what I was explaining earlier. We need to go ahead and remove the panel up top here. Go ahead, remove the side bars that hold up that top panel. We're gonna need something to hold that up. Remove the rear seat back, and then remove that bar, that support bar that keeps the factory seat back on. And then once we do that, we go ahead and take everything apart, and then we put in these new brackets right here for the new back and top. And then we put the rear brackets on right here. So it looks a little bit weird on this diagram, but this bar actually hangs over the rear bumper. So if you look on the cart, see it hangs over the rear bumper like that. And then there's actually a hole right under here in the frame that's not shown through the plastic. So we're gonna have to go ahead and drill that out. So pretty much everything on this cart is uh, standard. So no metric that I've found so far. So the bolts that hold down this part down here are all 9 16 The other bolts on the side here are all one half. So I'll go ahead and just loosen everything and then shoot it off with an impact. This one's actually a smaller nut up here that holds this up, but there's two of those. We wanna get like a little pole or a bar to hold this thing up while we work on it and take everything else off. So this was a 7 16 which is basically like a 10 millimeter. Take these things off. Then we we'll just lift it up. And I got this thing right here just hold it up for now we'll leave the screws up here take these spacers off right here that we don't need right now and then work on the rest of this in time lapse
All right, now that we got step one through four done, removed everything. I kind of left all the hardware from the original seat here just in case I needed it. I don't know if I need it anyways, because I think this is the only thing we're really going to reuse is these long ones that go into the frame. Other than that, I think they supply hardware for everything else. Maybe not for the rear, but I got to double check all the instructions again. I'm going to go ahead and just clean up all this 30 years with the dirt back here with a vacuum. And then go ahead, get the new brackets on, drill out these holes down here for that rear bracket. So after looking at all these parts and seeing how they're wrapped, I think this stuff is made in the USA just because it looks like it's all hand wrapped. Usually the China stuff is a much more organized and uh, more like pre-made, pre-packaged and everything, including the bolts. So they actually have like T1, T2 on the bags and these are just handwritten, which again looks like more made in America type stuff that I've seen. So the rear bolt right there, says to use four of these right here which they look kind of short compared to what i took out so i'm not sure maybe they do use these just because our brackets are thin the old brackets were like a double stamped and they were really long so they needed long bolts all right so we'll go ahead and place these two brackets on there so you want to put it on this orientation with the l brackets going that way for the rear seats and then we want to grab out of the t1 bag four of these things, which are the nuts, the flat washers and the locking washers. And a locking washer, the locking washer goes between the metal. And just go ahead and just hand thread these in for now. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and drill out the holes for this. So You'll go ahead, use a 3 8 inch drill bit, just drill out the plastic. So 3 8 is kind of the perfect size hole for the bolt and everything that goes in. So you just gotta drill that out if you don't already have that hole on yours. So we gotta attach the brackets. So the T2 bag comes with all the bolts and nuts and four flat washers and two lock washers. So the lock washers are gonna go underneath between the frame and the nut. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just hand tighten for now. We wanna make sure everything's lined up and squared before we tighten it down and torque it down. So the next step is seven and eight. So the seven and eight is basically putting the platform onto here and the bottom foot thing we want to make sure we attach all that before we tighten everything down to make sure everything's nice and square like I said earlier. Alright, next we want to put this thing on top of here. So it goes on this direction right here where the top part kind of nests into here. And then we want to line up all the holes. So we got to line up these holes right there with those holes. And then these back holes on the seat with that. So this is where I wish I had a helper with me. but we'll just figure out doing this yourself so you want to go ahead tuck this behind there so bag c comes with two long bolts two short bolts a bunch of flat washers and lock nuts so we'll go ahead this thing put it right into there the short ones go from the top down and the long ones go from the front to the back of the rear here and the rear bars go on the inside of that platform All right, the next step is to put on the rear panel. May want to need to get something to hold it up to help support it, but just go ahead and get it onto there. Line it up with the holes, which lines up perfectly, and then use the T1 hardware nuts and bolts to attach it. All right, next we gotta go ahead and put on the crossbars that go right here up to here. So use this hardware A, which is 
bolts, washers, and some lock nuts. So there's two up here, two down there. Pretty easy. We'll go ahead and time lapse that now. All right, I just found a little bit of a problem when I was trying to put the arms on. I realized I put that back panel on too far back. So I actually have to slide it forward more because right now it's on the wrong hole. So I need to unbolt the top bolt and slide it out to the outside bolt. All right, I was able to relocate that and everything lines up pretty good now. Still gotta do some massaging just to get everything to line up perfectly, but we'll go ahead and time lapse through installing these sidebars. So found a few quality control issues right here. This bolt head is way too long for this guy. So when I fold it out, it actually hits it. So you actually have to get a shorter bolt or cut that down. Same with back here. It ends up almost touching this thing when you close it and open it. So you might have to trim that down too. So definitely these two side bolts are a little bit too long for what we needed here. So for now, I'm, I just flip the bolts around having it on the outside here. Same with the one on the front here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little rubber cap on here just because it's a kind of a dangerous spot right here just to scratch someone walking by or put another nut on the outside. But I think I'm gonna put the cap on for now just temporary until I get some bolts that fit this thing. Now that we got everything attached and bolted down and tightened, go ahead and put the seat top on here. So it goes on top of here and it bolts on using the B right here. So we'll go ahead and get the top put on there and start screwing it in. So the seat top actually comes with a little vinyl rubber on top of it to keep it protected during shipping. I'm gonna leave that until my kids mess that up. But I'll go ahead, get this thing all sorted out here with the B hardware. So it looks like they're all Phillips heads. There is a few hex ones, I'm not sure where they go, but we'll use the Phillips heads because I think that's what goes on to here. And there's six of them with the washers. But I think the washers belong to the hex head bolts right here. So those four hex heads are actually for the OEM seat that we're gonna be reusing or reattaching to this. So I'll save this on the side. So next we're gonna go ahead, attach the OEM seat back using that new hardware they gave us. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the new seat back right here onto here, all time-lapse right now. So I ended up putting that rear seat on. You actually have to use the factory hardware on that because the four bolts are for the new backing. So we'll go ahead and put the new backing on. The instructions say put the new backing on first and then put the factory one, but you need to do it reverse just because you can't access those screws right there once this new cover is on. New cover is much easier to reach as far as the bolts go. All right, we got the backing on pretty easily using this little DeWalt angle right here. This thing made it much easier to reach some of these hard to reach places down here. But as you can see, bolted on nicely, nice and secure. Nothing's going anywhere. So the next thing we're gonna do is reinstall the factory arms that hold the top on here onto the sides right here using the new hardware that they gave us right here. So the factory roof mounts, I think they're just uh, the same size on the, either side. We're just gonna go ahead and tuck it from the inside here, make sure it lines up with the hole up top, and then line up down here with the bottom holes, line those holes up, put the new bolts in, and we'll go keep it loose until we get the top sitting on top of it. So we're almost done on the home stretch now. The last thing to do is put it on the rear safety bar. So the rear safety bar has these two little things on the bottom that we attach to the bottom of the leg thing. A little handle right here that hooks onto that spot. And then pretty much everything just bolts on and get that rear panel on there. So I'll go ahead and just bolt everything together and show you guys before we put the final handle on.
Oh yeah, got this thing all put together now. Everything's tightened down, nice and sturdy. I like this rear bar now with the actual hook right here to make this thing a nice sturdy table. We'll go ahead and flip it back. It's perfect, it's a nice grab bar. Get onto here, sit for the kid. Go ahead and put on the safety reflective stickers that come with this. I think there's two that go on the bottom there and then like a triangle right there in the middle. I'll go ahead and stick that on and we're pretty much done with this project. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video on doing the seat upgrade on my new golf cart. As you can see, this is a very simple upgrade. A lot of people do this, and a lot of people probably pay someone to do this, but if you're a DIY person like myself and you found this very useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel to stay on top of all my different DIY projects, whether it's on the cars, on the house, in the garage or whatever I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, turn on bell notifications, get notified every time I upload a video. For all these different DIY projects, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you guys for watching all the way to the end and I'll talk to you guys next time.